Sonia Taya is the choreographer of Up Here on Hulu. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Sonia, I wanted to start just really big picture and ask you, when you heard the concept of this series, especially how they were going to you know, incorporate music and choreography and dance and movement, what about the idea really spoke to you and drew you into the project? It's, well, first of all, the, the group, the creative team is so um, exquisite and talented and creative and all the things. And then, you know, we are so in our heads most of the, of, of the day. <laughs> and being able to uh, be front footed on you, utilizing those fears and anxiety and humanizing them um, and putting them in motion was so inspiring to me and so mysterious on how to do that. Just felt really dreamy and it has, the show has so much heart to it. And again, so much humanity and, and earnestness and um, the hardships of courage and love is just all the elements for good, exciting challenges as a choreographer. Absolutely. And we'll dive into a lot of what you're talking about throughout, but I want to ask you before we turn to some of the, you know, in particular songs, what was the process like? Because there's quite a number of musical numbers and, and a lot of work for you to do in each episode. Right. How, or how early were you getting those songs? How long did you have to kind of conceptualize? And then how long did you have to rehearse and then actually shoot? Because some of these are really, you know, they're, they're grand. Some of them are small, but a lot of them are grand, yeah. big ensemble. So just talk us through, you know, every step of that process. I have to, I have the worst memory and it's all an exciting blur. Let me think about it for a second. So I had about, I would say a month with my associates building material and I have a creative space. So I just, we, we jumped in here and started to just, I, I jump around. I don't often go in order. I just start to listen to the music and while I'm cleaning or going for a walk and then I, whatever is sticking that day, I hold on to and we start to, I start to explore it. And then, as you said, there's a lot of, it's, there's so much movement in it and so much storytelling inside of it. So we had to rally a, 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 a great amount of ensemble members, incredible artists from people who I loved, people who I, I met for the first time, which was such a, it's one of the, my favorite summers of, of dance. Um, and then we had about, Uh, we rehearsed throughout the shooting. So if we were shooting um, episode one, I was rehearsing episode six and getting preparation. When I say rehearse, it's, it's to get the ideas and the tone on its feet. And we were also close to each other on set. So Tommy was upstairs and design, like everybody was all around. So I was just, I would just be texting everybody and saying, okay, I think something's cooking for episode so-and-so and then everybody would come and Ash would bring her camera or iPhone and we would start to start to just jam ideas ahead of time. I wanted to be really front-footed on um, allowing the ideas to brew so we could be more prepared for set design, scenic design, all of those elements that come with making a musical on television. Um, so it was nonstop rehearsal, but only to feel whimsy and prepared when when it was shoot day. And that's what I, I really am proud of is that there was this groundedness and awareness of what everybody was walking into on the day. So it could just be fun. Those long hours could just be fun. It sounds incredibly exciting and fun. And I can't imagine, you know, conceiving of all these different pieces in such a short amount of time and getting them on their feet. I mean, it, it's really um, extraordinary. Uh, you have done, um, choreography for television before yes um and of course you you know choreograph for the stage and have a tony award which is so wonderful um mm -hmm. i wanted to ask you you know how did those different experiences help you on this project or what was totally unique about this because i feel like this had challenges that maybe you know your other television work hasn't had or certainly your stage work doesn't so just talk about working with the camera in, in a new way let me think about this yeah, every 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 concept is so different and has its challenges. Every, everything does. And I think for this, 
it has such, I wanted to make sure that the heart of it and the emotionality were the things that pulled us in. So, and movement with intention is so important to me and interpreting Miguel, Miguel's walls falling down and falling in love and feeling the, the, is, is it possible? Like what, what, what could I create inside of this? I, I was very inspired by Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, that film, um, because it was so of worlds breaking down and rebuilding themselves. And it was all from the psyche and all from love. And that was a big, really fun challenge in making sure that that was the focus. Does that make sense? Is that the, the storyline is just, we, we are enhancing it and building it up in really theatrical ways. And my other... In other tele, in other TV moments of my life, it's where I work with Florence on, on The Voice and American Idol, and all of those things are like artist focused, very centered, and very performative and frontal. Um, this had a circle. It, it's a it's whimsy, it's weary, it's wondery, it's above. So we, we really try to um, execute that energy. Uh, in this really fantastical way, making the the humanity soar. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And I feel like what's so special about this show is that the songs, as they do in theater, give us real insight into the characters that you know we don't get from the scenes necessarily. They're kind of playing a part, you know, and, and acting in the scenes. But in the in the songs, we really get true expression of emotion um, in yeah. such a unique way. And the threading of that from words to song and the, and song and, you know, the song and the motion are so inter intertwined, nothing of it, of the sort is separate. So that you, you want to thread, but you don't want to pull, you want to just keep threading and keep the channel connected. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Let's talk about um, the couple at the heart of the series played by Mae Whitman and Carlos Valdez, who are just so oh. great. Um, Talk about working with them. I know that they have musical experience. I don't know how much, you know, experience they have with dance, but they had to, I guess if they didn't have a lot or no matter what level they had, they had to acclimate very quickly um, oh, yeah. to, to the demands of, of this series. Um, yeah. You know, what was it like working with them and how were you able to, as time went on, you know, maybe increase, you know, the complexity of what you were doing based on, you know, them picking up new skills as, as you went? You know, anytime they're they're a joy. I love them both so much. They're dear humans to me, and they carry. I mean, the acting is just exquisite, and they're just so full of heart open, soul open, beautiful people. Um, and that's that's the thing to have when you walk into a space of of they're both in their bodies. I'm sure they'll say differently, but they're both so in their bodies, and they can both move so beautifully. And I think anytime there's any anxiety about movement. We talk about life because that's where it comes from. It comes from life experience. I'm not a, an artist who focuses on the dance vocabulary. When needed, I will. But this was more about what does it feel like, like I said, to when you feel the walls coming down, what does vulnerability feel like? What is it? How does it move? How does coming into a new city, what does it do to your face? What does it do to your torso? What does it feel like? So it was all this um many hours talking and building that trust with them and then we were just off to the races they carried their humility and vulnerability and openness every time they were in the room so it made it it made it so easy in a in a challenging setting you know yeah i i can't imagine like i said earlier so much to learn in in such a short amount of time and it, yeah. it comes across so well um, That's why I think the preparation of having those a uh, little over a month of, of preparation of rehearsal um, and then preparation prior to that, I wanted to have that groundedness in myself. So they, when they walk in, I'm saying, OK, you're going to learn you're learning episode eight and we're on episode two. That's tough. And they handled it like a champ. Like that was how we had to do it. Every time they walked in they were, they would say, what are we doing today? And I would say episode episode six and we're in episode two or episode, it was wild and they just we would lean in and meditate for a second and circle up and do some breath exercises and then start you know there's so many songs and moments that we could dive into and I pulled out just a few that really stood out to me one is uh I think in the third episode called chapter two 
which is Lindsay kind of um, reviewing, you know, I don't know how much time has passed, but her experiences with Miguel, and you get to reinterpret scenes that we've already experienced um, there in black and white, which is beautiful, and you get to introduce new movement and new characters and life. Just talk about, or I guess I should ask, you know, what was the concept for that? How did it look on the page? What did you want to bring to this kind of moment of thinking back and reflecting on, you know, what somebody has just lived through? I, well, I had this idea of writer Lindsay and what, what, what is writer Lindsay eager to do? So I wanted it to be funny and, um, and to create that desperation of get, needing to get the next chapter. So I recorded many versions of my associates being Lindsay and then writer Lindsay, and then we would cut them together and then turn it to black and white and present it to everybody and say, I know this isn't exactly what happened literally, but seeing the, the showing writer Lindsay and, and the desperation behind what she needs and then breaking out of that and going, wait, and seeing Lindsay settle and go, but I, 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 I want him. I think I love him. And seeing that shift, but having that comedic tone. So you go from writer Lindsay and all this eagerness and suddenly you see them whole, have a day together and, and, and you see that electricity form and then you see Lindsay fall into it. And I thought that was so beautiful. I, I really wanted to show that of, 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 urgency I need to get it I'm, I'm going to be this silly stalker writer writing vigorously and then suddenly wait this isn't what I want I don't want to do this I want to know him and and showing that change was really fun yeah it, it came out so well another moment which you alluded to earlier um and I really want to talk about is uh I am not alone yeah just such a great moment for Miguel um, as you said, kind of set in the bathroom and then the walls kind of expand and explode and um, kind of goes into this black box space with beautiful yeah. lighting um, and great movement. It's Thank such you. a pivotal moment for, for Miguel's character. Talk about, you know, just what, what was behind that when you saw that on the page? What were your initial thoughts and how did you kind of carry that through to, you know, what is finally on the screen? I just kept thinking, what is it? What did it? What does it feel like? when the walls come down, when your walls come down? What does it feel like when you feel that you're a few inches off the floor and anything is possible? So I, I kept thinking, how do I show walls falling down? And then I asked everybody, can we, we need to build walls. We need to watch them break open. And so he can see this vast galaxy of possibility and love and then that hit at the end of Lindsay coming back in and saying you, you want to keep this casual right like the the confetti out of the toilet it's just like so silly and fun but it's me of trying to evoke the the feeling of when that we've all had those moments even if they were minutes or days or seconds of I think I'm floating and I think anything is possible and I can I can I'm love is what I do now. I got this, you know, it's like that feeling of just feeling so um, inside of possibility. So we had some wa drywall in the, or cardboard wall in the rehearsal room and it was so fun to make. It's one of my favorites for sure. Oh, mine too. Another one of my favorites um, and certainly something with a totally different tone um, is so many ways, I think in the same episode, which yeah. um, has Brian Stokes Mitchell, who's just absolutely incredible. And yeah. it's such a kind of fantasy sequence. Um, it's got, you know, the kind of picking up on his circus theme of his children's book. And <laughs> it's it's really dark and fun and, and erotic. I mean, just talk about the inspiration for that too. And working with Brian, who is oh. obviously just incredible. A dream, he's a dream. He's such a dream to work with. He's such a sweetheart and so, game and collaborative and creative. It was, it was so fun. Um, that one is, is when you don't, you, he couldn't feel smaller enough. And the ego was in a swirl. I called it the ego swirl when you're not man enough, whatever that means, not strong enough or powerful enough. So everything about 
Magooch and Lindsay, it, it was like a, a nightmare experience of he's, I'm never going to be that sexy. I'm never going to have that much money. I'm never, I'm never, 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 never. So you go from, I'm not alone to anything. I can do anything to so many ways to, I'm demoralized. I have nothing of spark. She's never going to want me. And I'm in my own horror film of, of uh, ego and insecurity. Yeah, it's great. Um, like I said, one of my favorite moments. Uh, before I let you go, Sonia, um, two quick questions. Yeah. Because we, we can't possibly touch on all of the work that you've done in the season. <laughs> what, what song or what sequence did you find the most challenging? And conversely, or it might be the same, same moment, what was the most rewarding when you saw, kind of realized, you know, when you were doing it and then when you saw it on screen that you just felt like that you know, all the hard work into that paid off in ways, you know, you couldn't have even imagined. Chapter two was the hardest one to crack. That one was really, really tough. It was 40 versions, not I'm exaggerating, but a lot of versions of that section, just how to craft that in a really creative way, in a visual enough way to, to get to the end. Um, I think I'm Not Alone was the one that day where I was just, I was so happy how it was being shot and that the idea was working and felt so evocative and so um, connected to what I was trying to achieve. Yeah, those are the ones I feel too that really, you know, stand out and just kind of leap off the screen. Um, Sonia Taya, congratulations on up here. Thank, Thank you so you. much for talking to Gold Derby today. Thank you, have a great day. Mm -hmm.